The whistleblower who informed Americans about the US drone war has been sentenced to 45 months in prison. Now, the Biden administration had called for nine years, but the federal judge in this case decided to sentence Daniel Hale to a little under four years. Now, for those of you who might be unfamiliar with who Daniel Hale was, he is in fact the one who leaked classified information about drone warfare after leaving the military. He was in the Air Force and essentially he was the one who would point out the targets for drone strikes. And then he realized, I am not in favor of what's happening right now. This is wrong and I need to make it stop. I need to make sure that Journalists know what's going on, that the American people know what's going on with these drone strikes. And when you look at the numbers, when you look at the casualties, especially when it comes to innocent civilians. I mean, anyone who would think of Daniel Hale as the bad guy in this story is just absolutely wrong. So let me give you some details and then we've got a video for you. So the documents included a report finding that reliance on deadly attacks was undermining intelligence gathering. During one five month stretch of an operation in Afghanistan, the documents revealed nearly 90% of the people killed were not the intended targets. Hale also discovered or disclosed, I should say, the criteria for placing a person on the terrorism watch list. Information that Muslim civil rights lawyers said in a letter to the court had helped them challenge the constitutionality of that system. And you know, when you think about the role of whistleblowers in this nation's history, whether it's, it has to do with the foreign policy that we carry out abroad or what happens within our own borders. It's really information that's important to the American people in order to hold those in positions of power accountable. But those in positions of power, of course, want to rain terror on whistleblowers. They want to ensure that they get charged with violations of the Espionage Act. They want to ensure that they're imprisoned, sometimes in solitary confinement, which was the case with Chelsea Manning. and. I am worried about the treatment of Daniel Dale in prison. I wish that he wasn't sentenced to any prison time at all. But of course, it you know, doesn't matter which administration we're talking about these days, whether it's Obama, Trump, and now Biden, they certainly want whistleblowers to pay the price for what they've done in disclosing critical information to journalists and the American people. Now, I wanna to go to this next video that features Democracy Now! and their, I think, pretty well done and comprehensive description of who Hale was and how important how important his actions were. Let's take a look. Hale was enlisted in the US Air Force from 2009 to 2013, during which time he worked with the National Security Agency and JSOC, the Joint Special Operations Task Force at Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan, where he helped identify targets for assassination. He later worked as a contractor for the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. In March, Daniel Hale pleaded guilty to one count of violating the World War I era Espionage Act for leaking documents exposing the drone program. He'll be sentenced Tuesday. In a handwritten letter to Judge Liam O'Grady, Hale describes feeling immense guilt for his role in the US assassination program. He wrote, quote, not a day goes by that I don't question the justification for my actions. Hale went on to write, to say that the period of my life spent serving in the United States Air Force had an impression on me would be an understatement. It's more accurate to say that it irreversibly transform my identity as an American. I mean, it is kind of incredible when you think about the true traitors to the country that are still celebrated in the United States. I mean, we still have Confederate soldiers statues in this country on public land. We still have a pretty significant portion of this country celebrating the Confederacy even now. Remember, the Confederacy was against the United States because they wanted to maintain slavery. And, you know, people celebrate Confederates. And you look at someone like Dan, uh, Daniel Hale, and he's considered a traitor who deserves time in prison. It's just 
But speaking of US District Judge uh, Liam O'Grady, uh, he did in fact uh, sentence him to 45 months in prison for violating the Espionage Act, saying his disclosure of documents went beyond his quote, courageous and principled stance on drones. In fact, uh, during his decision, the judge said, quote, You are not being prosecuted for speaking out about the drone program killing innocent people. You have been a whistleblower without, I'm sorry, you could have been a whistleblower without taking any of these documents. So he stole the documents, he leaked the documents to Jeremy Scahill, a reporter with The Intercept, and that's what he is being prosecuted and now sentenced for. But I would argue that the American people wouldn't know about incredibly important details of that drone war had it not been for the whistleblower. I mean, Americans would be in the dark about the awful nature of the drone program and the number of innocent civilians who die as a result of those drone strikes. So to say, oh, well, you could have spoken out against this, but you didn't have to steal documents. You didn't have, yeah, but Going out and and saying that, hey, we're doing this and we're doing that, people are gonna want evidence, they're gonna want proof. And having access to those documents allows a journalist like Jeremy Scahill to do the reporting that's necessary for people to know about our wrongdoings abroad. But like I said, the incentives are always in the wrong place. The worst things get incentivized. Bad people get rewarded over and over again in the United States, but someone like Daniel Hale, who really risked his own freedom in order to get this information out to us. He's the bad guy, he's the traitor to the country. I would argue he's the opposite of a traitor to the country. He's someone who actually believes in what this country is supposed to stand for, right? We're not supposed to engage in cruel and inhumane acts, but we do it. We do it all the time. We do it abroad all the time. We sometimes do it in our own borders, but Daniel Hale's the bad guy. Well, I also want to go to this next clip. It's from a documentary that was made about the drone war and also about Daniel Hale. And in it, he spoke about what motivated him to do what he did. So let's watch. The people who defend drones and defend the way that they're used, they always say, you know, they, they protect American lives by not putting them in harm's way. But what they really do is they just embolden commanders, they embolden decision makers because there is no threat, there is no immediate consequence. They can do this strike and they can potentially kill this person that they're so desperate to get and to eliminate because of how dangerous, potentially dangerous they could be to the US. But if it just so happens that they don't kill that person or that some other people are involved in the strike and get killed as well, you know, there's no consequence for it. When it comes to high value targeting, every mission is to go after one person at a time. But anybody else that's killed in that strike is just blanketly assumed to be an associate of the targeted individual. So as long as they can reasonably identify that all of the people in the field of view of the camera are military aged males, meaning anybody who is believed to be of age 16 or older, they are a legitimate target. They, as long as it's a male 16 years or older, they're a target, right? Even if they didn't engage in any wrongdoing, even if the intelligence community isn't naming or or specifically identifying people who are are dying, right, as as terrorists, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if we do drone strikes to take them out, doesn't matter. I mean, look, I, I get that some people don't care about this issue. But when we talk about why there's hostility toward the United States in other countries, I think it's important for us to know what we're doing, because if Any other country did drone strikes against us that killed innocent civilians within our borders, we would be outraged. Americans would probably be out for blood, not all of them, but a significant portion of the country would want vengeance, they want justice. And in this case, you know, you have the United States military taking out innocent civilians and wondering why it is that there's hostility toward the United States, thinking that we're Above the law, we're allowed to do whatever we want and destroying innocent people's lives 
is totally fine. We're, we're spreading democracy, everyone. Now, what were the arguments made by prosecutors? Prosecutors think that, well, you know, Hale actually put US soldiers' lives at risk. And that's what we hear every single time a whistleblower is being prosecuted or talked about, whether it's Edward Snowden, Chelsea Manning, in this case, Daniel Hale. But they can't name a single person who was harmed physically or otherwise due to these leaks, not a single person. They just get to make that argument and go out of their way to ensure that someone who did the right thing, especially in this case, is put away in prison. He didn't get nine years, but he got almost four years in prison. Um, I do wanna also read a quick uh, statement from him. This is from Daniel Hale, July 27th, 2021. This is what he said in court. I think it's a powerful statement. I'm here because I stole something that was never mine to take precious human life. For that, I was compensated and given a medal. I couldn't keep living in a world, uh, living in a world in which people pretended that things weren't happening that were. Please, your honor, forgive me for taking papers instead of human lives. The incentives are in the wrong place. Valuing human lives over the feelings of generals and military men in the Pentagon or our own politicians. It's, you know, it's not good. You don't, you don't really get many incentives in doing that. You get punished for that. And we keep seeing that happen over and over again with whistleblowers. Edward Snowden uncovered and informed the American people about the government indiscriminately spying on us. He can't come back to the United States. He is considered an enemy of this country for telling us that our rights, our privacy rights were being violated by the federal government. The American people can't hold the government accountable unless they're fully informed about what the government is up to. I get that the government doesn't wanna be embarrassed. I get that they don't want any accountability in regard to the murder, the slaughter of innocent civilians abroad. But if we're to live in a real democracy, we need to be informed about what our government is doing. And heroes like Daniel Hale put everything on the line to let us know what's really going on. And for that, all I can do is thank him, but at the same time feel incredibly embarrassed that the Biden administration pushed for him to be in prison for what he did. He doesn't deserve time in prison, he deserves to be a free man, period. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more, there's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all of that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.